Hello, you're watching the Open RAN Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels. Now, as the development of Open RAN continues and with commercial deployments now underway, telcos are investigating how to use AI to automate and optimize their radio access networks. Joining me now to explain more is Paul Miller, Chief Technology Officer for Wind River. Hello, Paul. It's good to see you again. Um, Let's start off by looking at the challenges that CSPs face. Should we? What are the biggest challenges as they roll out and start to manage their open run networks? Yeah, thanks, guys. So it's really interesting what's going on now. We've reached a point in the evolution of open RAN and virtual RAN uh, deployments where we now have several years of deployment at very, very high scale uh, happening in multiple geographies. And it's really exciting to see that because we're obviously seeing the fruition of many years of investment from many companies in that ecosystem, bringing open RAN to reality. Uh, and so the feasibility and performance are now proven to be superior than legacy RAN. Um, but there are new challenges emerging as, as we've gotten to this stage of maturity in deployment. Obviously, it's one thing to build an infrastructure and an application that functions. It's quite another thing in a telco service provider to build this application so it can be maintained and operated at full scale in a telco service provider network. As we know, uh, many 5G deployments have you know over 100,000 sites that are used for uh, the VDU in the case of the Open RAN. And to manage that as a fully distributed architecture requires a high level of automation. And we're now seeing the ability to bring AI in to help assist with that automation and operations challenge in running such a large uh, Open RAN network. Well, that brings us nicely to AI. Um, what would you say is the role of AI in a telco network, or perhaps what should be its role? Where can AI have the greatest impact and how would you quantify it? Yeah, so we're seeing it enter in a couple of different areas. Uh, we see certainly the SMO and uh, the, the real-time RIC and these sort of things that are enabling dynamic control of the radio function within the 5G network to have uh, interesting AI-based applications, um, things like dynamically controlling the direction of the signal based on where, um, you know, based on where the endpoints are, and, and saving power and efficiency, and that sort of thing is happening. Uh, for our company, we're very involved in the infrastructure layers of the deployment of Open RAN, and what we're seeing is the Open RAN is obviously founded on a cloud technology called OCloud from the ORIN uh, Software Alliance, and that um, that architecture basically is Kubernetes deployed at an extremely high scale. And that means you have a, both a disaggregated, what we call a vertically disaggregated system with hardware, a virtualization layer, and then the RAN application sitting on top of it, as well as an east-west disaggregation where you now have multiple vendors interoperating with each other through the open RAN standards. That is a massively complex thing to deploy and maintain with multiple vendors involved in that, in that uh, architecture. And so we're finding applications for AI in the operations management and oversight of this type of a network, um, basically because the deployment of that system with the high node count, with the complexity of it, it's too much for a human being to absorb. You need software automation in order to maintain and operate that environment. And AI has proven to be uh, an incredible addition to that, as, as we'll see today. Well, we'll come on to that uh, in just a moment, but I'd just like to pick up and ask, um, you know, given what you've told us about where you operate in the network and what you're seeing, how has Wind River been leveraging AI so far? Yeah, so we basically build a solution that we call Studio Operator that has a completely open source foundation based on the open infrastructure foundation Starling X. And that is a geo-distributed Kubernetes solution that allows you to deploy a uh, Kubernetes architecture across thousands of sites and run that from a single pane of glass. This is very important for an operator trying to run at high scale to deploy with zero touch provisioning, um, to maintain these virtualized applications across thousands of sites. On top of that, we layer on uh, Wind River Analytics that gives us the ability to monitor and visualize with the reporting and machine learning what's happening in that deployed architecture. Then on top of that, we deploy our orchestration and automation platform, which we call Conductor. And this is where AI starts to enter into the application because Conductor gives you a single pane of glass view over the entire network. Um, but as we had just spoken about, the ability to use AI on top of that is proven to be incredibly powerful. Um, for example, 
uh, predictive outage avoidance, where the, all of the data is coming back in from these edge systems is aggregated in a data store. The AI has the ability to peruse that and identify problems before they actually occur. And so AI is bringing us the ability to identify a network outage before it occurs, rather than having the service provider, provider react to it after the event occurs. Uh, the other thing that it's useful for is debugging the network. Uh, event correlation is an extremely important thing where you have all these different systems. There may be a fault that occurs that you see, you experience an outage or an impact, but what was the root cause of that? Which system was it? Was it networking? Was it storage? Was it compute? Was it virtualization? And so the ability for an AI to consume large amounts of data and correlate that information and provide in seconds an output to the operator that says, here's exactly where your problem is that caused that outage is of massive value. So event correlation, root cause analysis, predictive outage avoidance, and automations operation are all areas that AI is being leveraged in the uh, running of open RAN networks today. Incredibly useful. Now, you, Paul, you, you promised to, sh to uh, show us an example. So perhaps you could take us through a demo now. Yeah, certainly. So this is a, a demonstration that we ran in Mobile World Congress this year. Um, and this is the AI that we mentioned. It's a large language model AI sitting on top of the open RAN network. It sits on top of that conductor element that I mentioned. And you can have a natural language interaction with the system. So here you can see the user querying how many subclouds, what are the names of the subclouds, and the ability to gradually interact with it as a as you would talk to a human. You know, are are the systems running? Are there any faults in the system? Um, can you tell me about those systems? You know, do what are the namespaces that are deployed there into which I can deploy containerized applications? Uh, are there any problems in the system? Here you can see what's the version of Kubernetes running? Perhaps you need to upgrade your Kubernetes. And notice much like you would use um, you know, modern AI tools like ChatGPT, you're able to have a conversation with the AI that's now sitting on top of the network. This replaces clicking on dashboards and firing scripts and you know, driving API commands manually, turning these hundreds of API calls into a simple normal English question that you ask the Gen AI. Uh, you can see here the user is asking about alarms in the cluster. Um, are any of the alarms critical? And give me the details for that alarm. Um, notice how quickly you can tunnel down into the problems and resolve um, what they are. Um, you'll see here the user asking, well, what do you suggest for me to fix this? How do I address this alarm? Uh, and the system will research that and come back in seconds with a variety of answers. In fact, we've demonstrated at Mobile World Congress this year the AI can actually suggest um, commands that can be executed by the user to resolve the problem. Uh, we've seen AI able to um, analyze through log files and come back and point to the exact source code or script that's creating the problem that the user is experiencing. And you can see here the power of having just a very easy interaction between a user and this massively deployed system that may have tens of thousands of sites um, asking it questions and getting answers and helping solve problems, right? Are there Kubernetes security certificates that are about to expire? Where are they? When's their expiration date? You don't have to know anything about the underlying commands or scripts or APIs to do this. You just have a conversation with the AI. So the things that you see it doing here as we're um, looking at would take a user looking up in manuals or researching through API commands or user interfaces hours to figure out how to resolve these things. And as you can see in this compelling demonstration, the AI is doing it in the blink of an eye as the user naturally interacts with them um, in normal manner. So pretty exciting demonstration and uh, lots of videos like that that we, we gave examples of AI at Mobile World Congress this year. Um, we think this is the next generation of operations for Open RAN, the ability to uh, operate a highly disaggregated distributed system through simple interaction with an AI is very, very powerful automation. Fascinating. You know, Paul, it's only when you see it do you realize the, the full potential. Uh, thanks very much, Paul, for that. Uh, a final question for you then. What should the industry expect from you and Rind River in the near future? Yeah, it's very simple. Uh, productization, right? We're starting to see as Wind River is unique in the market of having the only highly scaled uh, operational deployments of VRAN and OpenRAN in the world. Um, we're getting challenged by our customers in the market to solve the problems of running these systems at a high scale. So um, bringing the capabilities that you saw into the product uh, and productizing them beyond proof of concept to actual 
uh, product capabilities that our customers can consume and use is very, very important. And we expect to be bringing that to market this year. Um, and then, of course, expanding the role. Um, we're actually bringing some of these AI tools into our own internal teams. The ability for our teams as they support the customer to leverage AI, to analyze logs, to look at source code, to rapidly turn around changes, in addition to the operational features that you saw today. Um, so it's both going to emerge in our products as well as being used within our teams internally to support our customers. Well, thanks very much, Paul. It's good talking with you again and sharing your views on OpenRAN and AI. Thanks very much. Thanks, Guy.